Hello, sisters and brothers. Welcome to Wild Olive Trees. I'm Brother Paul from the Fellowship of the Spirit. And the precept that we're going to address today, how to resist temptation. How to resist temptation. Sisters and brothers, when you come into the, the covenant and you get baptized and you come up out of that water and you're a new man, a new creature in Christ Jesus, now our job is to stay away from sin. And we know what sin is. It starts with the table of contents, the Ten Commandments, and then it branches down these different avenues, down these different roads to include things like the dietary law and the feast days and the cleanliness law and several other different laws. And they're not for all of us. There's laws pertaining to women, laws pertaining to men. Then there's laws pertaining to everyone. And if there's a law that you come across that pertains to you, you take hold of it. It's that simple. Okay. Those things sometimes are going to come back up. When you eat from the knowledge of the tree of good and evil and you're not supposed to and you partake in some of them things, Satan knows that you take pleasure in those things. He's going to kind of dangle that carrot in front of you. But we're going to see that your temptations are brought up, first of all, by you, selfish and self-centeredness, and it's up to you to resist them. And how we do that is through God's word. I will never tell you, sisters and brothers, just believe me, except for something like this. Believe me when I tell you, you don't want to let your guard down. Because when you let your guard down is when those old temptations creep in. And sometimes they'll grab a hold of you before you realize what's happening. So the first thing we need to do in resisting temptation is go to Mark, the 14th chapter, and we're going to read what Jesus had written. Mark 14, and we're going to start this off with one verse. Mark 14, brother, and brother Mike, if you're ready to start our lesson, start it off with verse 38, please. Watch ye and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. The spirit truly is ready, but the flesh is weak. Watch ye and pray unless you're going to enter into temptation. You got to watch and pray. You got to be sober and vigilant constantly, sisters and brothers. There's no time to let our guard down because the spirit truly is ready. In other words, we're hearing all about God. We're reading about God. We're doing studies. We're proving how to walk. And we want to do this, but the flesh is weak. When we let our hearts start to wander, this flesh will take over on us. And we know the difference between the lust of the flesh and the fruits of the spirit. Let's go to Luke, the 22nd chapter. Luke, the 22nd chapter. We're going to read one verse, brother. Luke 22. Luke 22 in one verse, verse 46. When you get there, brother, go ahead. And said unto them, why sleep ye? Rise and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. Why sleep ye? Rise and pray, lest you enter into temptation. How are you going to enter into temptation sleeping, sisters and brothers? Jesus always gives us a physical to show us the spiritual. He says, don't let yourself fall asleep here or you're going to come into temptation. So rise and pray. Pray in all ways with all prayer and supplications. Let's go to 1 Timothy, the 6th chapter. 1 Timothy, the 6th chapter. 1 Timothy 6. 1 Timothy 6. And brother, we're going to pick this up at verse 6. 1 Timothy 6. And verse 6. Go ahead, brother. But godliness with contentment is great gain. That's the first thing we have to learn to do is be content. And that's going to help us in itself resist temptation. Because when you're content with the things you have, the things that you're striving for don't become a god to you. It just becomes something that you're saving for or that you're striving to get. But it doesn't become more important than our Heavenly Father. Go ahead and continue, brother. Verse 7. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. Uh huh. And having food and raiment, let us be there with, there, there with, with content. Yes, sir. But they will, they, but they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in, in destruction and perdition. What's so hard about a rich man making the kingdom of God, sisters and brothers, isn't the fact that he's got money. It's the fact that now he can spend it on whatever he wants to spend it on. And if he's not watching and praying and being sober and vigilant constantly, that lust of the flesh is going to take over with that money in your pocket. Mm -hmm. 
not saying a rich man could never make it into the kingdom of God. It's just harder because now you have more temptation. Go ahead and continue, brother. Verse 10, for the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Because when you have the love of money, now you're putting money in front of all things. And that lust of the flesh will take over. And that love of money will outweigh the fruits of the spirit and sow in your treasures for the kingdom of God. Go ahead and continue, brother. 11. But thou, O man of God, flee from these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Go ahead. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called and has professed a good profession before many witnesses. But thou, man of God, flee those things that are abominable to God that will take you away from him and follow after righteousness. Fight the good fight. In other words, you got to lead and guard your heart and the spirit. That's another way to resist temptation. You're watching. You're praying. You're learning to be content. You're leading and guarding your heart. When you're leading and guarding your heart with the word of God and concentrating on walking in it, you don't have time for temptation. You're busy. You're busy. You got something in front of you. You've got work that you're doing. You're not letting your mind wander. You're being sober and vigilant. You're leading it. You're guarding it. You're content in the situation. James, the first chapter. James, the first chapter. James 1. Give everybody a minute to get here. James 1. Another way to resist temptation. Pick it up at verse 2, brother. Go ahead. My brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations. Uh-oh, these are diverse temptations. Go ahead. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. The trying of your belief worketh patience. That's another way that we learn to resist temptation. By learning to be patient or long-suffering. Go ahead, brother. Four, but let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire wanting nothing. A patient man with the Lord is a man that's waiting on his return. And when you're waiting in patience, everything you do will resemble that. Not saying that you're going to be perfect in all things. But tribulation worketh patience. And patience has her perfect work that you might be entire wanting nothing. Tribulation works patience because patience is one of the greatest attributes that a servant of God could have. Skip the 12 and continue, brother. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to them that love him. And the Lord says that the love of God is the keeping of his commandments. But blessed is the man that endureth temptation. You endure this temptation... You've resisted the urge to sin against God. Go ahead, brother. 13. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. When God but, doesn't tempt us, it's not God. God doesn't come and say, oh, let me tempt Brother Paul, see if he'll sin against me. I'll throw his lust in front of him and let him have it if he wants it. That's not coming from God. God doesn't bring evil on his servants. Go ahead, brother. 14, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. You're being drawn away and tempted with whatever the lust comes up is your own doing. It's selfish and self-centered. And when you let your heart dwell on it long enough, your mind, you're going to act on that. That's why we're watching and praying. When we get that crazy stuff comes into our heart, we're leading and guarding it. We're pushing it out and we're filling it with the word of God to lead us and guide us. We're constantly thinking on his commandments, statutes, and judgments, and how we can be of help to others with the right spirit. That's the proper way to resist temptation. Tell us where you're at and continue, brother. Verse 15. Yes, sir. Then when lust has conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. That's what happens when you give in to your temptation, and the Lord's only going to allow you to give in so much before he puts an end to it. You better put an end to it before he does. Let's go to James, the fifth chapter. And we're going to read one verse, brother. 
Let's read a little bit about enduring that temptation. Five and verse 11, brother. Go ahead. Behold, we count them happy which endure. Ye have heard of the patience of Job, and have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. It's sometimes it's not easy to be patient. Sometimes you get a bite in your lip. Sometimes you bite your lip till you taste blood. But you watch your mouth. You sit back. You observe. You get all the facts. You resist opening your mouth early when you don't know everything just to hear yourself talk. And you get it all together and get all the facts on the table. And when you do that, you resist that temptation, sisters and brothers. You've seen what happens when Job was patient and he listened to all them brothers railing on him. And he answered after they got done talking, but he was patient. He never railed back at them. He waited till he got all the facts on the table and everything they had to say. He even let the young man go ahead and rail on him. Mm -hmm. But he stood his ground and he was patient. And that patience had its good work. You have, you have heard of the patience of Job and seen that the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. Job's patient, his patience gave him more at the end than he had at the beginning when the Lord allowed Satan to tempt him. And that's what we're looking for, sisters and brothers. Having that patience is going to bring that reward at the end. The Lord's going to give us twice as much as we have now. He's going to give us his kingdom forever. Mm -hmm. Patience, sisters and brothers. Contentment. Watching and praying. Being sober and vigilant. Let's go to Matthew, the 24th chapter. I know I'm talking way too long. Let's shut up, Paul, and let's end this. Matthew, the 24th chapter. Matthew 24. In one verse, brother, verse 13, 24 and 13, go ahead. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. He that is shall endure until the end, the same shall be saved. Let's go to Mark, the 13th chapter. Gospel of Mark, the 13th chapter. One verse, brother, Mark 13 and verse 13. When you get there, go ahead, brother. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that shall endure until the end, the same shall be saved. He that shall endure until the end, the same shall be saved. What does it take to endure until the end? Patience. Patience. You've come up out of that water and you've taken hold of God's covenant and you're saved from all your past sins. Now through patience, contentment, watching and praying, being sober and vigilant, leading and guarding your heart, you go and you endure until the end, and now you got your reward. Let's continue. Last place, Hebrews, the 12th chapter. Hebrews, the 12th chapter. And, brother, we're just going to read verses 1 and 2. Whenever you're ready, brother, let's end this lesson. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Because we're laying aside every weight in the sin which does so easily beset us. We're enduring temptation. One more verse, brother. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. And we're looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, sisters and brothers. And we're looking for him to come and return and to bring our reward with him. And it's only going to happen, sisters and brothers, when we recognize what our temptations is and we know how it is that we're supposed to respond to them, how to resist temptation. So, sisters and brothers, as always, we thank you for the opportunity to rightly divide God's word. And we hope that somebody got something from these scriptures.